My name is Craig McLeod and I'm the producer for Battlefield 3 Aftermath. So today we're showing Battlefield 3 Aftermath, the fourth expansion in our Battlefield franchise. Uh, really, it takes place after the Tehran earthquake that people will have experienced in the single player, where our soldiers have been rising from the ashes to continue the fight in this area. So where our single player went into one direction, this is going back to that moment and going in a different one. So we have one new mode in this expansion pack and it's called Scavenger. So Scavenger is a fantastically unique mode when you think about it really levels the playing field for all our players. So it doesn't matter if you played for 10,000 hours or one hour, all of you are going to start in the exact same way with one pistol, one grenade, and one specialization. So you don't have to be afraid to jump in that someone may have leveled up much higher than you. You'll be on this, you know, on this level playing field. Uh, what's also great about it is it promotes exploration through our maps. So we have a number of weapon points dotted throughout our map, which you can then explore, pick up, and add to your arsenal. So there are three levels of weapons, level one through three. Level one are your weaker weapons, such as SMGs, and these can be found in safer areas of the map where you, you know, you run around, you have less chance to encounter an enemy. If you want the biggest and best weapons, such as the carbines, assault rifles, or LMGs, you really need to go to the more dangerous areas. You need to go to the flag points and to the, like, the open zones, and really sort of risk yourself to get these. So it really is a risk versus reward gameplay. Scavenger is also a take on conquest domination. So the reason we've gone for this mode is because it helps focus people in certain areas, and with the domination as opposed to normal conquest, it's a much faster gameplay to, to actually have. So Scavenger was really inspired from the the aftermath theme. You know, we we imagine that our soldiers and our players, when caught in this, are not going to have all their normal equipment. It will have got lost in amongst the rubble. Uh, so you really want to start from scratch. You know, we want you to be almost born again, uh, where you have bare minimum and then continue the fight from that point. So why have first person shooters abandoned the pickup gun theme? Uh, I'm not too sure exactly why this is, because it is a unique gameplay aspect. Uh, you know, I understand that a lot of players want to customize their soldier to their perfect uh, loadout. And of course you can do that in Battlefield 3 as well. But this kind of randomization where you are picking up new weapons, you don't know whether it's a shotgun, you don't know whether it's a crossbow, you don't know whether it's an LMG, uh, creates an incredible variety which I think our players will really love. So we have four new maps in Aftermath, uh, two that we're actually showing here today in Camden. Uh, we have Epicenter which focuses around a large broken up crossroads in the city. We also have Marquez Monolith on display today, uh, which the focal point is a large skyscraper that has been broken open by the earthquake, creating four levels of interior gameplay within this shopping center. We have two other maps, which is the Zadi Palace, which focuses around a big parliament building, which has been torn up by the earthquake, creating a lot of holes, cracks, and crevices, uh, almost a maze-like gameplay. And we have Talon Market, which focuses on a hillside village, uh, which promotes both uh, vertical gameplay for, on top of the roofs, as well as tight gameplay through narrow market streets and more open areas like the town square.
you think about the size of the maps, the map pack that this will closely, most closely translate to is back to Karkand. So back with close quarters, we did tight infantry only gameplay. When we did armor kill, we did big, huge, all out vehicle sprawling maps. Uh, really what we want to do is we want to do a combination of the two so that no matter what your play style is, what you enjoy, you can get something out of this pack. Some of my favorite elements within these new maps are actually on Telemarket is one because we have a unique monument which can be destroyed to fall on top of people and actually kill them. That was fantastic. Uh, our mark has monolith with our skyscraper that is broken open at the bottom. Uh, I actually saw a team hold that really, really well. And then one of the opposing team members got a helicopter and was able to fly carefully into the uh, skyscraper and actually take people out from the inside, which was wonderful. Um, so on Epicenter, one of our four maps in this DLC, we've actually included aftershocks in it. So as you're going around and you're playing the game, uh, you will hear an earthquake rumble. Your screen will start to shake. Uh, it will make it a little bit more difficult to fire because obviously you'll be moving. And if you're around Flag Point B by the high-rise buildings, you'll also see rubble falling down around you. So we've really sort of created almost a claustrophobic scary moment within this gameplay. Aftermath will be released on the 27th of November for PS3 Premium users and the 4th of December for Xbox and PC Premium users.